Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna get you familiar with the toolbar in Photoshop 2023. This is a continuation of my series from last week, where I'm gonna get you familiar with Photoshop 2023 so that you have the basics under your belt and you can start compositing. Now in last week's uh, lesson, we covered the user interface what I want to do in this lesson is show you the toolbar in Photoshop, get you familiar with what all the tools are, and then show you the single letter shortcuts for all of them. So let's dive back into Photoshop. So picking up from where we left off, what I want to do now is show you the various tools in Photoshop. Now, as you hover over them, you will see that you have a video description that you can click on. And this also shows you what the single letter shortcut is for the tool. In this case, in this case, it's V for the move tool. Now, because these are going to kind of get in our way as I'm showing you this, I want to do two changes to our preferences. So we're going to go up to Photoshop 2023, go down to settings, and then go to tools. And in here, I'm going to turn off the rich tooltips. Those are the video descriptions. And then I'm also going to turn off this use shift key for tool switch. And you're going to understand why in a second. Let's hit OK. All right. So now as I hover over these, we still get our little shortcut there where it shows you what the tool name is and the shortcut. However, we don't have those big blocks getting in our way. All right. So first we have the move tool. The move tool simply allows you to move objects within Photoshop. Now, generally, if you've just opened Photoshop, this auto select will probably be turned on. What auto select does is as you click inside Photoshop, you'll notice that which layer is selected changes. So if I click here, the phonograph is going to be selected. If I click on layers, the layers is going to be selected. Now, when you're working in Photoshop, selections and layers are super important. Any action you do usually requires a selection and requires that you select which layer you're doing that action on. So it's very important when you're working in Photoshop that A, you have a selection and B, you have the proper layer that you want to work on selected as well. So this auto select allows you by clicking to select which layer you're going to be working on. So if I click on the layers text here, I can then move that layer. If I click on the phonograph, I can move the phonograph. If I click on this bird, you'll notice it's selecting the wing. Now for something like this, I want to move the wing and the bird at the same time. So let's go to Edit, Undo, Move, and you'll notice the shortcut for that is Command-Z. If I want to select the group, meaning this folder that has two layers within it, I would change the Auto Select from Layer to Group. Now when I click on this bird, it's selecting the whole bird group. Now, generally when I'm working in Photoshop, I always leave this on layer and I turn it off. And the reason I turn it off is because when you have the move tool selected in Photoshop, if you hold down the command key, you'll temporarily get this auto select. And the advantage of that is as I'm working here, I may want to do something to this layer down here so I can hold command and select it. But now I want to move it and I don't want to accidentally move the bird or the layer palette. So anywhere I click on this canvas, I can move and it'll just move that layer without trying to select a different layer. Then when I know I want to select a layer, I'll simply hold down command again and click on a different layer to move. So that's what the move tool is. Now, you may be wondering how you scale or rotate something in Photoshop. 
because it, as we go down these tools, you'll notice that there is no scale tool and there is no rotate tool. And that's because those kind of exist with inside the move tool. You'll notice this show transform controls, which is currently turned off. If I turn that on, depending on what layer I have selected, you'll notice this blue box, transform box, appears it around that layer. And what this allows me to do, so I'm going to go ahead and select the bird group here in my layers palette. So I have the whole bird selected. And holding on to these little corner elements allows me to scale, meaning make the object bigger or smaller. And then by just hovering close to these, you'll notice my cursor changes to kind of a little rotate arrow. And when it's in the rotate arrow, arrow I can rotate. So that's how you rotate or scale something. You'll notice as I'm doing this, in my options bar here, I can do it more accurately. So if I knew I wanted to scale this at exactly 125%, I could simply type in 125. If I knew I wanted to turn it by 90 degrees, I could put in 90 degrees there. Now here, after I've made my changes, I can either cancel or commit. That's the same as doing this, cancel or commit. To commit, you can also hit enter on your keyboard. I'm going to cancel this. All right. Now, these controls do kind of get in the way as you're working in Photoshop. You don't want to always see these. So I leave these off. And to temporarily show them, what you can do is do Command T on your keyboard. And that'll bring you into the transform. You'll notice I now have the same options that I had before. I have the cancel and the commit. So I'm going to hit cancel. That's how you get those transform controls. Go Command T for transform on your keyboard. All right, so that's the move tool. Now you'll notice that on our keyboard here where we have this little triangle, that means there's more than one tool in that tool slot. And if I click and hold, you'll see I have those other tools. The artboard tool, we're not going to really get into for this tutorial, so we're going to just skip skip over that. But what it does is it allows you to have more than one page in your Photoshop document. All right, next we have our lasso tool or our marquee tool. And what this allows you to do is either a rectangular selection or elliptical, meaning circular selection, or a single row or a single column of pixels. So with the rectangular marquee, I can do this and you can see I now have a selection. And a selection in Photoshop is indicated by these running ants. And you'll also notice that my taskbar now moved to directly under the selection and I got different options in my taskbar. Now, if you don't like your taskbar moving around like this, what you can do is just drag it to where you kind of want it to exist. And I'm going to leave it down here, kind of in the center. Then you can go to these three dots and just click on pin bar position. Now, Photoshop won't remember this when you close the program, so you will have to do it each time you open the program. All right, next we have lassos. And this allows you to basically do a freehand selection. So very similar to the rectangular or circular, but this allows you to do freehand. Next, you have your auto selection tools. So this allows you to do selections that use artificial intelligence. So let's go to this background layer here. And you can see, I'm going to go to deselect. As I'm drawing here, it's figuring out that I want this uh, green mountain selected. And you can see it's done the selection for me. And Photoshop in the last few years has done a lot to add artificial intelligence to the selection tools to make this process, which is one of the longer processes in Photoshop, much faster. All right, next we have the crop tool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deselect. 
So with the crop tool, you can change the crop of your canvas. We're going to get into that later. For now, just know that that's what the crop tool is. Next, you have the frame tool. This basically allows you to create a frame inside Photoshop that you can drop um, external photos into. All right, next you have the eyedropper. This allows you to select a color from your image. And here you can adjust how much area your sample is sampling. So point sample just selects the pixel that you're hovering over. And then this does an average of three by three pixels and so forth. Generally, you're going to keep this either on point sample or a three by three average. All right, next you have your kind of correction tools. So this is where you have your spot healing, remove, your patch tool. These are all tools that are going to help you get rid of things in your image that you don't want. All right, next you have the brush tool. And with the brush tool, you can brush in Photoshop. So with my brush tool selected, and see, I kind of have this weird brush right now. You probably won't see the same thing that I see. But if I right mouse click, I'm going to bring up all the brushes. You'll probably select just a general brush like this. And with your brush, you can brush. Now, remember, I said you always have to make sure you have a layer selected. If I don't have a layer selected, I'm going to go here, deselect layers. You can see that I can't use my brush tool. I get this little stop sign. And if I click on it, it says could not use the brush tool because no layers are selected. So I'm going to hit OK. Just realize in order to brush, you do have to have a layer selected. And then you can just click and drag and that'll brush your foreground color here on top of your image. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Undo again. All right, next we have the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool allows you to change the sample here to all layers. And by holding down option, you're going to select your source. And then as you paint over here, you're basically making a copy of it. So let's go ahead and undo that. That's what the clone stamp does. Next, you have the art history brush. What the art history brush is, it basically paints to a previous state of your image. I'm going to show you how that brush tools within the context of our project. So for now, just know that this allows you to paint to a previous state in your history. Next, we have the eraser tool. This allows you to erase. So if I go to my phonograph here, I can erase my phonograph. I'm going to go ahead and undo. All right, next you have the gradient tool and the gradient tool allows you to click and drag to make a gradient. Now you'll notice that after I've made it, it's created a gradient layer. And with the gradient layer, I can control all sorts of things. We're going to get into this inside of our course. So for now, just realize that that is the gradient tool. All right, next we have tools for blurring or sharpening or smudging, smudging your image. And then next here we have dodge and burn tools as well as a sponge tool, which kind of desaturates your image. And then we have the pen tool. This allows you to make vector drawings inside of your Photoshop document. And if you don't know what vector is, the short explanation is that vector is resolution independent. So if I make a nice curved line here out of a vector and I zoom in really close, you'll notice that my blue line is a perfect curve while my pixels create these steps so that zoomed out we have the illusion of a curve as opposed to a real curve because any image inside Photoshop is essentially just a pattern of pixels. And if we zoom in close enough, you can see that it's essentially just a bunch of squares with different colors inside them. And a path or a vector is resolution independent, meaning no matter how much we zoom in, it never turns into squares. Now, there's a lot of 
uh, value to that within Photoshop that I'm not going to discuss here. Just understand that kind of as we move down here, these tools are more for paths and vectors. So with the pen tool, you can freehand draw paths like I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that path. Next, we have the text tool. This allows you to add text in Photoshop or change text that already exists. So here you can see if I wanted to change this to birds, I would do that. And then we're going to commit that with this check mark here. And the reason it's important that the text tool in Photoshop has a commit function is because most times when you're typing in Photoshop, you're accessing a shortcut. So for example, if I hit V on my keyboard, it's not going to type V, it's going to access my move tool. All right, next we have the direct selection. This allows you to select paths. Now I just deleted the path that I made, so there's no paths to select. This is your shape tool, and this allows you to make shapes out of vector paths. So similar to the pen tool, this is creating a path, but instead of a free form, you have uh, a rectangle, ellipse, triangle, polygon, line, or custom shape. All right, next we have the hand tool, and the hand tool allows you to move your canvas around. This isn't changing anything in your document. It's simply changing what part of the image you're looking at. This becomes more important when you're zoomed in. So for example, right now I'm at 100%, but if I change this to fill screen, now the entire thing is full, and I may want to adjust what part of the image I'm looking at. All right, next we have our zoom, and this allows us to zoom in or out of certain parts of the image. You can also click to zoom in, hold down Option or Alt, and then click to zoom out. My preferred method of zooming is the scrubby zoom. With the scrubby zoom, you're going to click and then drag right to zoom in and drag left to zoom out. So that's what the scrubby zoom does. To zoom, you can also fit screen or fill screen with those shortcuts there. All right, next we have these three dots. This allows you to edit your toolbar, which we're going to do in a second. And then down here, we have our foreground and our background color. These are very important when you're painting or making a gradient or even deleting in Photoshop. You can set your foreground and background color. To set these, you're simply going to click on them. That'll bring up your color picker. And here you can move this to change what your color is. Once you have your new color that you like, you can hit OK. And you can see that my foreground color has changed. I can switch the foreground color and background color with this little button right there. And I can also default them to black and white with this little button right there. All right, here we have Quick Mask. Quick Mask takes a selection, so let's make a selection here, and turns it into a mask. Now, we haven't really discussed masks yet, so this won't make much sense. Just realize that that's what it does, and we will discuss this again in the next lesson on masks. All right, and then finally, you have your view modes, and you can see the shortcut to toggle through these is F on your keyboard. And we've got full screen with menu bar, so you can see that kind of brought everything away except for our menu bar up here. If I hit F again, this gets basically rid of everything. So this is kind of the expert mode. If you're super familiar with all the shortcuts in Photoshop, you could work on your image entirely without seeing any menu. Bit of a challenge, but in certain scenarios, it's actually the way you will want to work. And then I'm going to hit F again, and this will bring us back to 
our default view of Photoshop. And that's an introduction to all the tools. The other thing you should do is learn all the single letter shortcuts for the tools. The most important ones are V to get to the Move tool. Then you have M for the Marquee tool, L for the Lasso tool. Then you have W. So W is all your auto selection tools, C for the crop tool, and hit escape there. You've got your eyedropper with I. You've got J for all your healing tools, B for the brush tool, S for the clone stamp, Y for the history brush, E for the eraser, G for the gradient, zero for the dodge and burn, P for the pen tool, T for the type tool, A for the direct selection tool, then we have U for the shape tools, H for the hand tool, Z for the zoom tools. So those are all your single letter shortcuts. The last thing I wanna do before we close out this lesson is some adjustments to our toolbar. So we're gonna to go to these three dots, go to edit toolbar, and I'm gonna to move to the extra tools column, all the tools we're not gonna be using. And you want to make sure we turn off this disable shortcuts for hidden toolbar extras. And this will give us a nice big advantage when we're using our single letter shortcuts. You'll remember that we went into settings and turned off the shift. So with this disabled, when we need a tool, all we have to do is hit a single letter. So I'm going to take art board tools and move that to the extras. I'm going to take the single row marquee, both column and row. I'm going to take the polygonal and the magnetic lassos and move those over. And then I'm going to take everything but the crop tool and move those over. We're going to take the frame tool, move that over. I'm going to take all these eyedropper tools and move those out. We're not gonna use the red eye tool, so let's remove that. And then for the brushes, I just want my brush tool to have the B shortcut. Um, actually, I'm gonna leave the mix brush and the brush tool. I'm gonna get rid of the pencil and the color replacement tool. I'm gonna get rid of the pattern stamp tool, so I just have the clone stamp. And then I'm gonna get rid of the history brush tool because for this, uh, course, we're just going to be using the art history brush. And then because I use the eraser tool, I don't want to have these two tools to contend with or to compete for my single letter shortcut. So I'm going to move those out as well. Same with G for the gradient tool. I use the G shortcut all the time. So I don't want these other ones getting in the way. And for the type tool, again, I'm primarily just using the horizontal type. So I'm going to move these out of the way for now. And that should do it. So let's hit done. And now that we've done all that, we have both our panels and our tools all set how we want. What I'm going to do now is go up to Windows, Workspace, and let's click on New Workspace. And we're going to select Keyboard Shortcuts, Menus, and Toolbar, and we're going to call this Nucle Tutorial. Now, if you ever accidentally click on one of these other workspaces, all you have to do is go up here to Nucle Tutorial, and your workspace should match mine. And that finishes this lesson. So there you have it. That is the toolbar in Photoshop and also all the single letter shortcuts for the various tools. I do highly recommend that you post those somewhere and just practice those individual letter shortcuts because they will increase your speed in Photoshop. Now, when it comes to shortcuts, there's a lot of them in Photoshop. And what I want to do in next week's lesson is cover what are the most important ones that you need to know as you're working in Photoshop. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel.
turn on your notifications so you'll see that tutorial when it comes out. Also, I should mention here that this series is part of my new compositing course, which will be coming out soon. Now, if you're interested in professional training in Photoshop, as well as professional resources, check out Nucle.com. That is where I sell professional training and resources for Photoshop. I've actually recently released my Nucle Photoshop Academy, which is a comprehensive all-in-one solution for Photoshop learning. It includes challenges, professional training, assets such as brushes, presets, overlays, and so forth, as well as an exclusive community of Photoshop artists where you can share ideas, exchange resources, and also do weekly meetups where we discuss various parts of Photoshop, techniques, methods, and so forth. So check that out. Really hope to see you in there. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.